Universities portrays a distinct form of organizational structure for its widely represented powerful governing bodies and the presence of a top-down hierarchy. Universities are academic institutions supposed to have a long-term vision, mission, purpose, goals and objectives. Nevertheless, these are getting professional bureaucracies accustomed to time-consuming decision-making processes through its statutory bodies. In this short video, I would discuss the role, powers and functions of the key statutory bodies of the public sector universities in Pakistan in order to bring to the limelight the existing water lakes in their smooth functioning. In public sector universities in Pakistan, in general, the Senate used to be the principal governing body where a syndicate is the executive body primarily responsible for the strategic level management. These widely represented bodies are responsible for the major decision making function in the universities. Chancellor being the chairperson, the Senate mainly comprises of the pro chancellor, the vice chancellor, one MPA a retired judge of the Peshawar High Court for secretaries of the provincial government departments, the chairman HEC, one distinguished graduate of the university, two personalities from the academic community, four elected representatives of the teaching faculty, one elected university administrative officer, and four persons from the society at large being persons of distinction from divergent fields to create diversity and balance across various disciplines. In the role of general supervision over the university, the Senate has a critically important role in the overall governance of the university. To hold the Vice Chancellor and other authorities accountable for its functioning, the Senate has the powers to institute scheme, set direction and provide guidelines for the terms and conditions of appointment of officer, teaching faculty and other employees of the universities, approve the proposed annual plan of work, annual and revised budget estimates, annual reports and annual statement of accounts and accord approval for the strategic plan, financial resource development plans and the statutes of the university. With the vice chancellor acting in the capacity of the chairperson, syndicate mainly comprises of a retired judge, all deans of the faculties of the university, four secretaries of the provincial government departments, two principals of the affiliated colleges, four elected representatives of the teaching faculty, one principal our chairman, our director of the teaching departments, institutes or colleges, three elected administrative officers, the registrar, the treasurer, one nominee of the HEC and one principal of eminence to be nominated by the chancellor. The syndicate having the role of general supervision over the management of the universities recommends annual report annual plan of work, statement of accounts, annual and revised budget estimates to the Senate for approval. The Senate is empowered to enter into contracts on behalf of the university, affiliate or disaffiliate educational institutions and sanction all teaching faculty and administrative positions. Being Corporated forum, the syndicate accords approval for fresh hiring of teaching faculty, officers and other employees of the university and take necessary actions for the good administration of the university in general. Point clear-cut provision and the relevant act that the Senate shall meet at least twice in a calendar year, not even a single meeting of the Senate of certain universities take place during the stipulated period of time. Besides, in defiance of what is legal, 
given in the act all decisions of the senate shall be taken on the basis of the opinion of the majority of the members it has been noted that some members of the senate used to have a dominant role and always call the shots moreover it is provided in the act that at least three members of the senate shall be female and on the ground there used to be not even a single female member represented on the senate of many universities these provisions sound theoretically fascinating but practically not viable which needs to be fixed for a more effective and pragmatic role of these important decision making bodies thank you for watching